Hello everybody, welcome to another beautiful day in Wisconsin. It is Friday, June 27, 2008. On my way to a wedding gig. This is the first gig I ever got off of YouTube. <laughs> uh, apparently they'd heard of me, but they found me on YouTube because I was the white guy who also can spend salsa. So I'm on my way to a wedding. I think he's white, she's uh, Latina. I don't know if she's, uh, I think she's half Mexican, half Puerto Rican, I'm not sure. About 175 people at the Polish Community Center, and uh, we're gonna go and um, do this. The first hour is gonna be kind of typical wedding stuff, uh, maybe with a little more emphasis on uh, more of a ballroom dance thing. We'll see how that goes. I'm not real good with foxtrot and things like that. You say foxtrot to me, and it sounds like something you'd step in in the woods. But uh, we're gonna try some of that for the first hour or so, and then go to a primarily um, Latino salsa format, maybe a little merengue, a little cumbia here and there, but uh, mainly salsa. Again, a very custom wedding, and uh, we'll see how this works. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm here, but I've made a decision not to load in just yet. <laughs> Having flashbacks of Hubbard Lodge. I'm uh, going to wait for this to blow over before I even open the door to this truck to go in and take a look at it. The good news is I'm early, I'm good and early. Well, there's plenty of thunder in the distance. Maybe not so distant. It's still raining. I gotta go back there, no cover. Can't sit here forever. I gotta eventually do this. Well, here we are again. Uh, we have a nice column in front of us. I don't call this the Polish Community Center for nothing. I've got my speakers kind of at an angle here. You can see that. Simply because we do have high ceilings in the main part. I don't think we, uh, we're going to have an echo problem, but just in case I ran it that way. And... Pretty big room. There we are, kind of situated behind the pillar. <laughs> just, just stupid. So, I'm going to be blocked off, straight on. But I have the lights aimed on either side of the pillar, hoping that it's going to work out for us. It was just for the, the weekly celebration, whether it was for something like a marriage, they would all bring food and wine. And then after the Eucharist, they'd use some of that for the Eucharist, then they'd take all of that, redistribute it, and they would have the agape, or the, the feast. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is some beautiful prime rib, along with some uh, stuffed dough uh, potatoes and gravy. This is my kind of meal. So I'm just outside having a quick smoke. Uh, before I talk about anything else, let me just say that that was some seriously impressive catering in there. Some kind of burgundy sauce, and the, the potatoes were like in, in stuffed dough, and then prime rib, oh my god. Or no, it was um, it was tenderloin. It was tenderloin is what it was. Absolutely fantastic, and medium rare just like I like it. Amazing catering, especially for a buffet. Fantastic. So anyhow, we're late, very late, and uh, we'll be getting started here pretty soon. But what I wanted to talk about real quick while I had some time was, for those of you who go to weddings and you don't know anybody and you know, you're know you gigging, I have some advice for you and, and try it. And when you do it and it works, you'll say, oh wow, Brian was right. If you want to have a fun conversation and learn something from somebody, find, like especially if it's a Catholic thing, find the father and the caller and talk to him because you're going to have more in common with that guy than you know. Those of you who know me know I'm not religious. so. I, we don't have those conversations. What we talk about is the business because he's in the business too and he's doing the same thing you're doing. He's there all by himself and doesn't know anybody except maybe the bride and groom. Maybe the bride and groom. A lot of fair weather Catholics out there. Talk to this guy. It's always a hoot. I have a good time talking to the fathers at my weddings. Okay, we're just hanging tight. Looks like they've all got things cleared and we can um, probably start about any time. Fox Tribe. 
you were a wondering. Box that's what they're calling it, yeah. And, and they, they brought me the CDs for it. Otherwise, I'd have never played it in a million I years. I never heard of that. Me in neither. My life. Me neither. And I'm the DJ. Crazy. Hey, Ramba. So it's like quarter to 11 and, and uh, they're doing a salsa lesson out here. My old salsa instructors are here. They remember me, I remember them, nice people. But now they know me as the DJ instead of the guy learning salsa. I don't know, a long, long time ago. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like quarter to 11 and uh, hopefully we can wrap this up pretty soon so we can get a little bit of dancing in before midnight. Okay, it's over. I'm in the truck, uh, going home. Got this bright light in my eyes. Uh, put the sunglasses on. That'll probably work out with me. Everybody thinks I'm always tired. I just naturally have these bags under my eyes. My my mother has them. My uncle has them. My grandparents had them. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm tired. Yeah, I'm tired now, but just because you see these big baggy circles doesn't necessarily mean I'm tired. Most of the people there in that wedding tonight who were out there dancing, I already knew them, or I knew of them, or I've seen them before. You know, it's just kind of a small Latino community here in town, or if you're into salsa, then you hang out at the salsa clubs, and I recognize those people. Quick afterthought here, I wanted to post this real quick. When I got home from this gig, I checked my email box, and there wasn't a comment left on my Another Gig Sabotaged video, the last gig log I did. And, um, you know, somebody was saying, well, you know, if you thought outside of the box every once in a while and stopped playing the same hundred songs all the time, maybe you could have pulled this gig off. Well, you know, I worked with this client. I talked to him uh, a little bit, and, and I told him, look, I'm going to have to give these people something they want, you know, before we jump into your playlist. And it was kind of a weird playlist that was, you know, slow songs from Simon and Garfunkel. The only fast songs I can think of that were on the playlist were, um, uh, like, obscure Chuck Berry B-sides that nobody knew. And they didn't let me do anything. They didn't let me warm anybody up. They just wanted to stick it to them with their songs. And it just didn't work. And there's nothing I could have done about this. Instead of saying, hey, screw you, I'm going to play whatever I want. And I wasn't about to do that. I just let it go. But uh, this gig, on the other hand, was different. This gig, um, I was able to romance them a little bit with something that was familiar to them before I went ahead and did what the bride and groom wanted, which was more of a ballroom slash salsa night. Okay, here's an analogy for you. Think of it like a woman. Okay, sometimes you get a freaky woman who will just do anything, and then sometimes you get a woman who's a little more traditional, and uh, she, she doesn't want to try any kinky stuff. Well, if you got a freaky woman, well, you can. she might scare you with some of the things that she wants to do. Kind of like some of your guests might scare you with some of the things they want right off the bat. They may run up to you at a wedding that you think is maybe conservative and start asking for, like, trance and house and and crazy stuff that, yeah, you're happy to play, but you're really surprised that they want this right away. And then most of the time, you get the more, you know, timid conservative crowds that need to be romanced a little bit. They might want, uh, you know, some, you know, the party favorites. And, uh, you know, if you make them happy and you get them moving around, then you can kind of do about anything you want with them later if they trust you and they're having a good time. Same thing with a woman. If she's timid, maybe you got to give her what she wants you know, before you start suggesting freaky stuff to her. And if you coax her right, she'll get freaky with you. <laughs> That's a funny analogy. I'm sorry I had to throw this up. That's all I got to say. Practice and enjoy. <laughs>